is now down on the ground. Official touchdown time, 10.33 this morning. They marks the preparations for the start of the fifth launch of the space shuttle. Columbia will come down the taxiway and be rolled into the mate demate device, large steel structure, where the Columbia will be taken off the top of the 747. And tomorrow morning, early, probably in the neighborhood of 5 to 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, will be towed over to the orbiter processing facility. Once in the orbiter processing facility, Columbia will spend about eight weeks being ready for its fifth flight, which will also be the first operational mission of the space shuttle. Columbia's first four flights were considered test missions to explore the performance characteristics of the shuttle vehicle. And on the fifth flight, Columbia will carry two commercial communication satellites into orbit. One of those will be a business satellite called Satellite Business System C because it is the third in a series of SBS satellites. The other is Telesat E, which is one in a series of satellites that provide domestic communication services for Canada. Columbia will move from the orbiter processing facility into the vehicle assembly building around mid-September. There it will be attached to its two solid rocket boosters and the massive external propellant tank. The crew for STS-5 will be Vance Brand as the commander. He was the command module pilot on the historic Apollo-Soyuz test project, which linked an American and Soviet spacecraft in orbit. And Robert Overmeyer will be the pilot. STS-5 will be the first mission to carry two mission specialists up as well. And they will be Dr. Bill Lenore and Dr. Joseph Allen. They will be responsible for the deployment of the satellites and the operation of the other experiments that will be carried into orbit. Following about 10 days of work in the vehicle assembly building, the space shuttle vehicle will be moved to the launch site. Pad 39A, the launch pad used for all four of the previous space shuttle launches, will again be the site of the fifth launch. Launch of STS-5 is targeted for late October or early November. STS-5 will be a five-day mission, ending with a landing at Edwards Air Force Base in California. This is Shuttle Launch Control. The flight crew of Bob Overmeyer, Vance Brand, uh, Dr. Bill Lenore, and Dr. Joe Allen have just gone into the breakfast room uh, to prepare uh, to have their breakfast uh, prior to making the trip out to the pad. Right in the foreground is a cake uh, with a orbiter on it. Uh, the design is the design of the crew patch for this particular crew. This is the, the very first of the uh, four-man crews, the very first operational flight, the very first uh, EVA uh, in orbit. Uh, joining the astronaut crew uh, for breakfast includes the associate administrator, uh, General James Abramson. The, uh, the crew is arranged... Uh, uh, going from uh, Bob Overmeyer on the 
uh, left uh, to Vance Brand, to Bill Lenore, uh, to Joe Allen. seconds away from switching command of the countdown from the ground computers to the onboard computers. And the SRB development flight instrument recorders are on. And we have a go for auto sequence start. T minus 21 seconds and counting. The SRB nozzles are being moved through a test pattern to launch position. T minus 15 seconds. 13, 12, 11, 10. We are go for main engine ignition. We have main engine ignition, three, two, one, and solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of the first operational space shuttle mission with two satellites on board, and the shuttle has cleared the tower. Houston now controlling, mission control confirms roll maneuver starting. 20 seconds, plus looks good. 26 seconds, roll maneuver completed. 30 seconds, Columbia now, one nautical mile in altitude, throttling engines down to 85% is programmed. Mark 40 seconds, Columbia now, two and a half nautical miles in altitude, one nautical miles down range. Mark 50 seconds, coming up now and create a maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. 55 seconds, Columbia now four and a half nautical miles in altitude. Mark one minute, pass through Max Q, still looking good. Uh, throttling engines back to 100%, giving a go at throttle up. Columbia, this is Houston, you go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. Mark one minute, 10 seconds, Columbia now seven nautical miles in altitude, five nautical miles down range. Mark, one minute, 20 seconds, uh, Columbia now, 10 nautical miles in altitude, 7 nautical miles down range. On the Houston, we're monitoring a slightly depressed trajectory expected because of the headwinds. Roger, One minute, 35 seconds, I was Capcom Bob Stewart advising the crew a slight depression because of the headwind. Columbia moving out now, it's pre-planned on three good engines. One minute, 45 seconds. A brand over Meyer, Lenore, Allen, uh, now coming to the last traces of the Earth's atmosphere. Columbia now 19 nautical miles in altitude, 18 nautical miles down range. Mark, two minutes. Standing by now for solid rocket booster separation confirmation. Roger, PC. Columbia now 25 nautical miles in altitude. Two minutes. 15 seconds, confirm solid rocket booster separation. Two minutes, 22 seconds, onboard guidance is converging as program. Columbia is now steering for a precise window in space for main engine cutoff. 31 nautical miles in altitude, 43 nautical miles down range. This was slightly later in the flight. The uh, MS seat has been taken down. And we are uh, busy at work. You can see that uh, I don't believe there's much information on tube CRT2, which was one of the, one of the only very minor little problems we had. Just a general scene of the Earth to give you a feel for what it looks like looking out our windows and the extent of the horizon. Opening of the cargo bay doors. Opened the uh, starboard side first as normal, and then uh, went right into the uh, opening of the port side door. Uh, our our pack men are in there with the satellites all there. The uh, I, I snuck a quick peek out of my seat to look at the uh, 
uh, SBS spinning up. Bill, unfortunately, had to stay up there. I had uh, the Columbia was behaving so well that I could, felt I could afford to just go take a quick sneak of it. <laughs> this is the view that we were looking at out the window, and you could tell we weren't very interested in what we were seeing. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, quilted pattern on the uh, sun shield is really not that quilted. It's just that with the stark relief of the uh, bright sun on the side throwing the shadows. Watch the spin start. And this, we think, is what you on the ground saw because this was uh, being sent back by television. And uh, the same view, but from the other window during the deploy. And that is exactly how it looked. The only difference, in real life, there was a large and loud bang just as it let loose, which uh, got our attention, believe me. And it was the sound of the pyros firing to release the hold-down clamps. That's quite a sight, watching that go away from you. We never tired of seeing this site. We had some very good earth viewing attitudes, uh, and uh, this site was just a common one. Uh, the, the so, so was this one. This site. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a medical experiment. It's not clear who's the experimenter and who's the experimentee. <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah. I'm all censored up, and for uh, Joe hadn't yet done it, but the best restraint that we could come up with here was great tape, so he just taped me to the floor, and then we'd press on with the experiment. <laughs> We were tempted to leave and tape it to the floor a lot, but uh, <laughs> our uh, daily exercise regime, this is Vance. Uh, note the, the dop kit floating around there, just just hanging loose there. This, yeah, the exercise is a great idea. Here we have a scene, uh, Bill, preparing food. No, no, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, all the scenes of preparing food is Obermeyer preparing food. And I, ah, think I, yeah. I think I was a yeah. class cook or something. There's a message here. <laughs> All the people eating were over Mar too. <laughs> <laughs> Marines eat a lot, though, and we've known that since the third flight. Food was very good, so no complaints. And after but the deployment, here was my pay. <laughs> <laughs> they were really peanuts. Joe says they're banana pellets, but they were really peanuts. <laughs> And uh, even oh. Joe got something to eat here. Some of our pitch about habability, uh, we worked as a four-man crew. He got crowded at times, as you noticed. Uh, <laughs> Joe had a great way of eating. There yeah. he's got it. <laughs> watch the part, watch the part that's spilled now. Watch that. that. There you get that one. Get the, there, you got the other one. All <laughs> and that, that uh, was quite literally a fruit cocktail. And just, <laughs> just the... Uh, Stickiness kept it on the spoon. Joe cleaned up amazing. his plate. This is the famous Vance Brand slow roll in space. It doesn't show up too well, but Florida and the Cape are down here in the background. We are rolling the vehicle as part of a one of the DTOs associated with the antenna testing. And uh, watch the sun come across the the aft part of Columbia. The, the crew it felt a little bit like rolling an airliner over Florida. So one of the neat things is in the sunlight. When it came off the orbiter white, boy, that was white, white. And when you looked out into the nothing, into the sky, that was the blackest black you ever want to see. And in the daylight, of course, we couldn't see any stars behind that black. So we, we had a black sky instead of a blue one. And the second day deployment, this is Telesat as seen from the aft bulkhead TV cameras. And then from the bulkhead TV camera, you can see the, uh, I guess this is the movie, actually. Uh, you can see Telesat emerging from behind the satellite business system sunshield here and looking very much like SBS had the day before. Using the uh, tail as a reference, it noted how, how it tracked right up that uh, tail just without a hitch. It was just absolutely smooth. We could then watch the satellites for many, many minutes after deployment. Here's the picture taken from the uh, TV chase airplane of the orbiter as it's coming in on the approach. We're still above the overcast at this time. We'll pop through the overcast very quickly. Came out below. Of course, we were landing around sunrise. You can see the reflection of the sun off the, the ship. Makes a, a very nice picture. We were down below 10,000 feet at this point on our 19-degree glide slope coming for pre-flare. Uh, the pre-flare maneuver is just a pull-out at 2,000 feet, which uh, occurs over the 
Edwards uh, Dry Lake bed that you see in the lower part of the picture here. And uh, we were shooting to land on a concrete runway, which will come into view a little later. And here we are pulling out, and the gear is down. Uh, it came down at around 400 feet. Uh, Bob put it down. Joe checked that it was down. <laughs> and then Bob checked, checked that it was down. <laughs> and we rechecked it. And then Vance checked that it was down. <laughs> and here we are, touch, coming to touchdown. And Vance knew we had touched, but the three of three of us, of his crew members, did not. We had to ask. It was as smooth as silk. We had a max maximum braking test on the, the rollout, and so that's what we're starting to do uh, as we roll out there. We really put the brakes on hard, and then they eased off the last little part of the rollout. Absolutely super glass smooth landing it was uh, really seriously didn't even feel a bump when the vans put it down it was really uh, spectacular we had a, a team effort from 10,000 feet on down on all this uh, landing stuff and, and right here is uh, where we started uh, seeing the what looked like the Spanish Armada coming at us trucks here's, and stuff and we here's were our out. welcome by the uh, NASA official unidentified on earlier flights <laughs> <laughs> 